Hey you lads and ladies, it's the one and the only, the Jawsome one, your favorite YouTuber of all time. And uh, today I uh, played another game of Age of Empires 2. This has taken a little bit of time to make because I, I made a couple of mistakes. I didn't realize this, but uh, there's a specific thing you have to do in order to get the hotkeys to work. So uh, this is actually my first game where I finally had my own hotkeys set up the way I want them to. And so here we go. This is between myself, Carlos, Santana, and Arita96. So let's begin. What mistakes did I make? Okay, so the way this game begins is that I, uh, I'm really trying to learn how to play this game the same way a professional Age of Empires player does it. And I have some idea down of what the typical build order looks like. However, this is a regicide match and I really was uh, not expecting to see this many villagers at the start of a game. Uh, I'm also not used to having a king. I, In hindsight, I probably could have used the king to explore a little bit more. Instead, I immediately, out of fear of, uh, you know, just him dying somehow, just put him right up in the castle, and then sent the scout out to explore. Meanwhile, Carlos, back at his base, he is just gathering resources. Looks like he hasn't really built anything yet. Just same situation as me. Same situation as me, really. And then my boy Arita, first thing he did was build houses, and this is really an uh, unusual placement. Normally what you want to do with the, with the buildings, and this is something I learned from watching professionals play, is that uh, what you want to do is- oh hold on, fog of war, there we go. Normally what you want to do is you actually want to set up, uh, you want to set up your housing as sort of like a wall to kind of block off anybody from coming into your base with a small army. This isn't super important immediately. But when you start building houses, you do you do kind of want to put that... What the... Are you serious? Oh, he doesn't... No, he knows. He knows about them. Fog of War. Alright. Now, he signaled for whatever reason down here. Carlos Santana signaled right here. Yep. They're friending each other. This is exactly what I called them out on. Um, near the end of the game, the two of them team up on me. I probably shouldn't have said that. Because now you guys are like, oh, well, now we know what, now we know how this ends. <laughs> yeah, the two of them decide to team up on me, which really sucks. Uh, they don't do it right away. They actually wait for me to attack first. Uh, I guess so that they can like point at me and act like I'm the bad guy. So here, I was so concerned about uh, about uh, just early game getting rushed, maybe tower rushed, or maybe one of these guys were Persians, because I didn't want to take the time to open the diplomacy menu and see who was playing as what. Let's see, the, yeah, he's the Huns, he's the Mongols, and I'm the Saracens. And Saracens are great for cavalry. Uh, they they have uh, they have camels and they are their unique unit comes from the castle and I forget what it's called but it's kind of a ranged camel unit I can't think of the name of it it's like it, it just sort of throws like an axe or something it's and it it's it's a nice little unit back to Carlos's point of view looks like he's still just collecting resources he's not doing anything interesting at the moment he hasn't even so much as built a mill yet. Oh, that's weird why it say it's selected. Anyways, over to Arita's perspective. Yeah, once again, gathering resources, nothing unusual here. I think I'm gonna fast forward for a minute. There we are. So there's me with my walling, and I'm really, really concerned about scouting. Yeah, uh, I don't know how to set this up. I don't know how to set this up, but what I really need to do is I need to, uh, I need to set it up so that I can always see the game score, and I don't know how to do that. Like, if I go to, say, option C, it just, like, I don't see the option for that anywhere. I'm sure that there's some, like, button I can press to pull it up, but I have no idea of what that button is. I just, I don't have a clue. I don't have a clue. So I'm just playing the game the way it is and not worrying about that too much. But yeah, I decided to go around scouting. Oh, I paused. Hold on. That's right, there we go. Okay, yeah, he's, he's the FK for a moment. He's building. Then I sent him really far forward, and I had him build an outpost just because I, would, uh, just because I didn't really feel like scouting, and because I knew that that would be a good place. You know, if someone scout was going to come into my base, that would be. Uh, it just felt like a good spot to put that because it's wide out in the open. Turns out that outpost becomes kind of useful later on down the game. It it's really surprising how these things turn out. Back to Carlos. All right, finally got his first mill down, and unlike. And unlike Arita, he actually got it down in the right spot on his berries. Back to Arita. Back to Arita. 
He is building his first lumber camp. I can't really imagine what's going through his head right now. It looks like he's just not expecting any sort of early game rush, which is uh, not what you should do when playing Age of Empires. You should always expect the worst in a game like this because you never know if the person, if the player you're up against decides to go ahead and send a villager forward or two villagers or maybe five even, and they just sort of tower rush you. Maybe they get your wood. Maybe they build it by your will. Maybe, if you're up against Persians, they can do a thing called the Persian Douche, where uh, basically they take your main town center, right? For Persians, their town center, their main town center, or no, their town centers, period, have double the health of a regular town center. So what they can do is they can delete their town center and then put it, like, right next to yours, and then they can garrison all their villagers in it and then shoot arrows and, you know, they can you can have a TC war. And you're pretty much guaranteed to win that as Persians because of the double TC health. Alright, back to Carlos. What's he up to? Nothing, again, nothing really interesting. This is kind of the way the early games, the early game goes. I think, I really, I, I know this sounds kind of, uh, kind of silly coming from me, but I think I'm actually making the better plays here out of the two. Out of the other two. This is a noob game. Uh, yeah, I made very sure that this was a, that this was a noob game that was set up that way. And uh, I think the two of them already had something against me because my uh, my score was higher than them. I'd only played one ranked game before, and I lost it, which brought my score down to like 1188. And it was still much higher than these two. They had like scores of like 1,000 and like 950 something. And uh, oh, I forgot all about this. Yeah, I built a dock because I figured, you know what? This would be a great place to gather more food for myself. I mean, really, like fishing ships are basically Fishing ships are basically uh, more, what's the word, more long-lasting farms. Fishing fishing ships are basically more farms, and you don't have to build quite so many mills for it. It's more expensive than wood, I feel, but the amount of food you get from it is just, it's too good. Okay, here we go. I decided to build a barracks here. I'm starting to wall off this area. Look at that. I accidentally signaled right there. I was kind of... I was trying to figure out some of my hotkeys again because I'm still memorizing them. I, like, just the, the amount of keys you have to press in Age of Empires 2, it is, it's phenomenal. Like, it uses up your whole keyboard, then you have to use, like, Control and Alt and Shift on top of what's already there, and you have to organize things, and there is a default setup that I could have gone with, but I just, I never really liked the default setup. Oh, look, here, here he comes with his scout. And uh, he's, he was thinking about hitting my villager. He was thinking about it, and he decided not to. He decided to be nice. Back to uh, back to Carlos, by the way. Let's see what he's been up to. Looks like he has only scouted out this far. Nothing else really interesting has happened. Oh, uh, that scout. I thought that was Carlos's. That's actually Arita's, and that's really good to know. I had no idea which one... I had no idea whose was whose. Um, at first... Uh, because and on accident in the options setting, I uh, I'd set it up so that all enemies have the same color, so everybody was red, and I didn't know who was who. <clears throat> well, now I do know who was who. And again, I could have fixed that when I realized it, but I didn't want to waste that few seconds going into the options and clicking that button, even though I knew that that was all it would have taken to fix it. Okay, here we go. I finally advanced to the feudal age. He advances to the feudal. Let's check up on Arita. Let's see how he's coming along. Looks like he's finally he's decided to start mining up gold. He's got a dock, and he's got already more fishing ships than me. I think. I think he actually his eco is better than mine. Again, I can't look at their score. I really wish I knew uh, what buttons I need to press to pull that up, but I don't have a single clue. That was him building up another fishing ship. Yeah, see, there's my fishing boat. A whole bunch of my villagers went idle here because uh, I was having them far. I was having them harvest berry bushes, and they finally ran out. So all of them, all of them went dead. And I am, I am absolutely dead on resources because I'm spending every penny that I can, making sure my TC is full of villagers, constantly creating, and that I'm constantly having villagers going out and doing things, building. And this is uh, really, really important that you do this. Uh, it can give you a hard time though because uh, you don't have a lot of resources in reserve, so if you do get early game rushed, like I was expecting to get, you, you just don't have a lot of resources because you're spending it all on building more resor uh, resor <laughs> villagers and getting more buildings set up. And just, uh, 
Oh yeah, here we go. So here's where I finally start setting up walling over here, and I just discovered with my scout that this area needs to be filled up. I didn't realize it at originally right away. I thought this was like a peninsula and the, this whole area was surrounded with water. That's what I was thinking, but I go and explore this later on. Turns out, no it's not. That's just a little pond. What are you up to, Carlos? What are you up to, Carlos? Again, nothing special. He's hardly scouted beyond his base. Oh, no, nope. He's finally doing it. He is finally going out there and actually looking around with his scout. So, uh, good for him. Good for him. You know what? I think we want to get rid of Fog of War. Fog of War. Whoa. Um, hold on. There you go. I kind of want it to be like that because then I can tell uh, exactly how much every player is scavenged. While also being able to see what everyone else sees. Okay, he lost his scout. I didn't know that. He lost his scout to Arita. It's funny because you'd think that these two would be at odds against each other, but no. These two, they teamed up right from the get-go. They signaled to each other where their bases are, where their kings are. And they didn't signal that to me. I didn't see that. You know what? Actually, now that I think about it, I kind of want to go back in time and, um, and see, like keep this on my perspective and then see if they signal to each other and if I'm able to see that because I think that they clicked this and they were like oh hey we're only going to signal to each other and we're going to not include the Jossum one and then we're going to be like we're going to be like uh hold on what button is it what did I set it as again oh dear what did I set it as was it Q oh apparently Q does that ah I did it again there you go. Apparently there are hotkeys for this. Oh, I did it again. No, that's not what I'm trying to do. There you are. Okay. Actually, I've hardly scouted past my base. I thought I'd scouted already. I thought I had already started scouting a lot by this point. There you go. I set up my walling. Now I'm just now beginning to realize that this area probably needs to get walled off. This area is probably going to be a pond. And I also decided to build up some more docks. That way I can build up a navy in case I get attacked over the sea. I really was uh, expecting, you know what, if they're not going to hit me with an early game rush, maybe they're going to hit me with a navy over the ocean. So that was what I did. And Carlos, let's cut over to him. He, yeah, he just finished scouting Arita's base. Uh, looks like he hasn't tried to come anywhere near my base yet yet. He's currently just just building eco. He's completely peaceful. I I really, if I was if I had known that he was playing like this, uh, so basically if I had just scouted him, right? I would have hit him so hard right now. Dude, he has a lot of resources. He is stacking up on resources. He's not even keeping his TC going. You don't want to do that, by the way. Don't want to do that. You want to keep producing as many villagers as you possibly can. You want to keep them going because they are your main economy. They are what builds your buildings. These guys will construct your defense system. Uh, these guys are everything. If you lose your villagers, you've lost the game, you know? So you want as many of them as possible. You want to build up your eco as much as possible, and you don't ever want to slow down. See, these guys... So he's doing a bit better about that, and he's actually decided to finally go up to Castle Age. I do remember looking at the scores, and Arita, according to the scores, is the better player. And then cutting back over to me, I'm kind of doing the same... I'm kind of actually doing the same thing right now. I stopped producing villagers, which is a really big mistake on my part. I have about 38 villagers as opposed to what the other two have got. Let's see, Carlos is at... Actually, they're keeping on par with me, 35 and 35. So I'm ahead of them by three villagers. Only by three, though. Uh, I was, I'm surprised I wasn't more ahead of them than this, because these two aren't... I mean, I'm not an expert player either. Oh, here we go. Here's the part where I start exploring uh, beyond my base. Something else you should know about, by the way, the reason that uh, I decided to set up houses and I didn't bother setting up any gates... Oh, yeah, I also set up that tower there. That was stupid. I shouldn't have bothered with that. Uh, I set that up there because of the scout that was over here, and that tower ends up doing absolutely nothing for me. Complete waste of stone and wood. I panicked and I built it because I thought that that scout from Arita meant that he was going to be attacking me soon. So I built up that tower right there because this area wasn't protected, whereas this area was still protected with some houses. 
I've, I I explored some sheep, but I, I never bothered doing anything with them. Yeah, here's the part where I start just kind of exploring everything, figuring out where everyone is, what is everyone up to. And then I find a Rita's base, I'm like, ooh, let's mess with this guy. You see here, I pretty much walked right past Yellow. I didn't see this guy at all. I didn't even know he had a wood line there. I completely missed that. Uh, so if I turn Fog of War back on, which I'm not going to do because that'll... When I turn it back off, I'll get rid of this. But yeah, uh, I decided to kill his one sheep sitting there. And uh, I thought, uh-oh, maybe this will put me at bad standings with the Rita. Maybe he's going to attack me now. And, uh, well, turns out that didn't matter. Uh-oh. He lost a farm! He lost a farm! He's still just, just chilling. He hasn't bothered setting up any defenses. All he has is a barracks and an archery range. So he can do a little bit of... Oh, and a stable. He can do a little bit of fighting if he gets attacked, but not much. I still, I still am wishing that I just went for the early game rush on yellow, but I didn't scout his base, so I, I wasn't sure where he was. At this point, I was actually thinking he might be up here, so I scouted around up here, but again, I didn't see him. And so I, I sent the scout, I believe I sent it back around this way a little bit, checking things out. Spies have leaked knowledge of your king's location. Yeah, this, this freaked me out, because I was like, how did he do that? I'm on... But the thing I didn't realize is that I'm only in the Feudal Age, whereas Arita is already in the Castle Age, which I believe must have given him the ability to uh, to use spies on my king. I never saw that option myself, but <clears throat> if it exists for them, it must be for me too. Oh, it was Carlos that, uh, that used spies to figure out where my king is, huh? That's interesting. So it was Carlos who did that. I thought it was Arita. I thought it was Arita. See, Arita hasn't figured out where my king is. He hasn't even scouted out my castle yet. Though I'm sure if I were him, I would have been like, yeah, his castle's probably like right there. Let's see here. Does anything else really happen? No, not really. Yeah, here we go. I finally sent the scout out running. Exploring a bit more, creating more villagers, just really building up on that economy. Very important. Lumber camps. Oh yeah, I kind of panicked a bit because I saw I was super low on wood, uh, and that was my own fault. So I was like, you know what? Let's just build a whole bunch of lumber camps. I built one there. I built one there, and I built one there. And then I sent just a few guys over here to gather some stone. I was thinking, you know what? Maybe I'll castle rush them. I'll send a bunch of villagers, like three or four. And then I send him out as well, again, just to kind of do some exploring. And if I find out that Yellow's base is down here, maybe I'll erect a tower and just mess with him a little bit. But the thing that I don't know is by the time I get there, he already, yep, yeah, he builds a siege workshop and a whole bunch of mangonels. Uh, so when I got my tower erected, he just, uh, he just wound up destroying it and it wound up being a complete waste of my time complete waste of my efforts. So again, another unnecessary, useless waste of stone. If I was being smarter, as soon as I saw that siege workshop, I would have hightailed it away from there. But I didn't. I decided to build the tower anyways. Really smart, really, really stupid move on my part. I think another mistake I made was showing my hand too early, but we'll get to that in a, we'll get to that in a little bit. Rita here. Again, wow, he's doing way better and keeping on top of the fishing ships. Uh, this was not a very smart move of him, though, having his his guys come fishing, because that is a huge walk. It would have been better off for him to just build more farms or to send these guys off to collect more wood, because it looks like he's lacking a bit in that. Oh, he needs to uh, replace his lumber camp, too. That's, that's something that I think everybody kind of struggled with in this game, was remembering to reset our lumber camps. Yeah, see, he does it. He doesn't do it. And uh, later on down the game, I don't do it too, but I have like three sets of lumber camps, so it's it's not quite so big of a deal. But yeah, at some point, I think these guys realize that I'm definitely the better player out of the two of them, because just because of the fact that they double team me the way they do, you're gonna see what I'm talking about here in a minute, and I think you're gonna come to agree with me. These guys, these guys, just sort of admitted to themselves like. There's no way we can beat this guy 1v1. If if we actually go fight against each other and against him instead of teaming on him, he's gonna just destroy us. 
I think that's what they were thinking. So they just they just double team me because why not? Nice job, Wolf. Good Wolf. Good Wolf. Oh, I didn't realize he had so many Tarkins built already. Wow. See, this is what he initially attacks me with is with these cavalry archers. Oh, here we go. Here's the part where I build the tower. See, I, I finally scouted out his siege workshop. I'm like, uh-oh, that's not good. Let me just build this tower here. And uh, maybe that maybe I can mess with uh, Manganels a bit. Well, I uh, I was being stupid because I did not understand that Manganels take out watchtowers very easily. All right, so that's what Yellow's up to. That's what Carlos Santana's up to. Let's check out Arita. Arita has finally scouted. Uh, he has scouted me out a bit more, it seems. At some point, as I was looking away. No, wait, no. No, this is the same. This is the same as it was before. He's gathering up an army. It almost looks like he was planning on moving his army down to attack Carlos. Uh, which is curious, because I, I think maybe he was questioning questioning his ally there. You know, wondering if he's actually going to stay being his ally. Really smart of him to have built Spearman, because... Uh, uh, just because of the fact that Carlos is going with cavalry... It really makes you makes you wonder. Ooh, he has Mangidai. That's right, because he's playing as the Mongols. I thought it was interesting that these guys stuck with the Civ instead of going random, which is what I was doing. And yet they still felt like they had to team me. Like, oh, here's a guy going a random civilization that he probably doesn't fully understand how to play. But he's still definitely the better player, so we should just team them. I will not stop being upset about that. That... That may- I'm so mad because of that. Oh, here we go. I move up to Castle Age and I decided, hey, it'd be a brilliant idea if- What if I get attacked and I build like a secret location that I can move my king away to if I get destroyed? So I go up here with a vi with a single lone villager and I- Once I hit Castle Age, I actually build my own second economy right there. Which ends up doing nothing for me. Oh. Here's the part where he realizes, hey, I'm being attacked. Let's build a tower. Also- I decided to set up a military presence, and I was just going to mess with Yellow. I saw his uh, villager there with my tower, so I decided to move these two guys away from him as much as I could, because I didn't want him to see what was going on. I didn't want him to realize what I was planning. I was planning to hit him with archers, but then when I saw the Maganels, I was thinking, uh oh, yeah, there we go, there's where I messed up. I, uh, I didn't move these guys' uh, position. Like, I set these things up to automatically... Yeah, there we go. Here it is. I'm, I should have moved the flag over there, but I didn't think about that. I was too busy being focused on other things. Also, wolves will attack your skirmishers. I didn't know that. Now I know. Finally reach Castle Age. He's going to build that. Uh, I'm going to attack with all these forward buildings in a minute. But he, now he pretty much knows, he pretty much knows entirely about uh, the fact that I have an army here planning to attack him. Or at least a skirmisher. All he really knows about is that one skirmisher. But I think he, I think he knows that, I think he knew at that point that I was going to attack him. So yeah, there we go. He moves forward. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. What is he doing? He's just, just building more Tarkins and more Cav Archers. Hold on, I am thirsty. Give me one second. Wow, I don't know how casters like T90 do this. This is uh, this is really hard in your throat. Jeez Louise. Okay. Yeah, here he is. Just he's just nice and peaceful. He has no idea about my little army right there. He is I I think if he knew about my army here and he really was concerned, he wouldn't have sent all these forward villagers on that on that gold. And then Arita. Ah, uh, here's the part where Arita decides to come and attack me. Wow, I... Again, if I was just scouting things better, and if I had maybe some outposts set up just ahead from some forward outposts, I might have known that this was coming, and I might have been able to def to prepare some defenses and defend myself. But all of my... All of my military buildings were out facing Carlos. And see, look at that. He hasn't sent any military forward at all. Not even scouted Carlos. If you ask me, I think that's just more of a... Oh, yeah. Here's the part where I attack him. Ahem. 
say, here's what I've scouted so far, and I had no idea that these targets were coming. As far as I knew, I was gonna win this, and then these targets come in, they just they just destroy me. So I panic and I tell all of my uh, I tell all the units I'm creating to go inside their buildings. So now I can so that I could like create a little bit of army and kind of send them out here, destroy the Maganels. At the very least get the Maganels because they're expensive. At the same time, I'm getting hit on the east side by Arita. And he is he is charging away with his army because he knows that I've walled off. He realizes that I've walled off. And uh but then he decides, you know what, let's go ahead and break through right here. Let's just hit it. Let's just try and hit his eco. Now, for whatever reason that I can't explain, and I'll show you this after he deletes his house. Let's go back to this real quick. So he's already destroyed all my buildings. He's pretty much already won this at this point. I was able to kill one more Maganel with a with a horse. Let's slow it down a bit. There we go. He, I was able to kill off one of his units with my scout, and I wasn't able to do anything else. He does not know about this building, though. Let's let's go to his perspective here. So he he may have previously scouted this. Oh no, he hasn't. So yeah, he has no clue about that building. And Orange, Orange does a weird thing here. Look at that. So he destroys that house, and he acts like he's gonna come marching in, right? And he does. He does a little bit. I send my villagers to go inside their house to go inside the TC, but then he just he does that, right? But he gives up. He just gives up and he sort of leaves. He just sort of flees. I don't know what he was thinking, but here's the part where I panic. Oh, here! Oh, that clever monkey. I don't know how. He, oh, he walked right by the wood that was chopped. Because this lumber camp was the stupidest thing I could have done. I should never have built that there. I should have gone up this way. And I did realize my mistake of building that there. Because I didn't want that put there. But I just decided, ah, whatever. Ah, whatever. Probably doesn't matter. Nope. Wrong. It does matter. Hindsight 2020. I built the town center over here. Didn't do hardly anything with it. Uh, yeah, I also realized that I was being attacked by Arita's, by Arita's ships here. So I decided to build some galleons. I actually was already in the process of building some anyways. Yeah, Rita's just coming over here. He's just exploring, you know. He's just checking me out. And as soon as I realize this, I go to a dock and I immediately upgrade these guys to galleons. I think at some point as they're fighting this guy, this guy, this, this, this guy, they get upgraded to yellow. I finally realized that Yellow is building his uh, his castle here, so I send I send all my villagers from the wood line to destroy him. And I should have realized that he got in through here and walled it off. See, look at that, my guys walk right around here, and I still didn't realize how he got in. If I was paying attention a bit more to what was going on down here, I would have realized he got in through here, I would have walled it off, stone walled it off, stoned all across here, stoned, yeah, stone walled all across here. And, but I just, I didn't think about that. And so he comes in with his Tarkins. He kills off all the villagers I had sent. So I was too concerned about whatever Orange was going to do. I send forward this villager to try and uh, build some defenses. But of course Orange kills it because I didn't, again, I was too distracted. I was being teamed on both sides by the same, by the same two people. I'm surprised his uh, cavalry archers that didn't, think. I'm sorry, hold on. Yeah, see, I see him. There's no way he doesn't see me. Arita. Go to Arita's perspective here for a second. Yeah, Arita sees this. Ooh, this is interesting. I didn't know that other people can see the buildings you tried to lay down. That's nice. Oh, Arita got... Oh, probably by a wolf. It's probably, it probably doesn't matter. It's probably a wolf. Ah, we can see the whole map now. This is, it's not a big deal. Yeah, here's the part where Yellow comes in, and he just starts trashing, just wiping the floor with me, because I had no defenses set up. I was too freak I was too busy freaking out over Orange. I didn't. I had no, er, Arita I had no idea what he was doing, and I had no idea what Carlos was gonna do. And remember, at the time, everybody was red, so I had no idea who was who. I had no idea why. I had no idea why it looked like they were teaming on me. I at first assumed that Arita and Carlos's units were actually the same, that Carlos had somehow maybe taken a transport, or maybe he just maybe he just trashed through Arita's base and then came around this way with some guys. I had no idea. 
All I knew was that I was being attacked on both sides and I needed to defend myself. So I, uh, in my panic, I set up some archers, set up some archer ranges because I still, I still thought that these Tarkins, I had thought this whole time that those Tarkins were just, um, were just cavalry archers. We're just regular cavalry archers. So I was still thinking that I needed to counter them with skirmishers. So I built those archery ranges to counter his cavalry archers with skirmishers, <laughs> like a dummy. Uh, and I also decided to build some mamelukes while I was at it to kind of help these guys out in some fighting. And then over here, I realized, hey, I should probably start building some more villagers. Just kind of protect myself a bit more. <coughs> Oh boy, the throat is killing me. Let's go to uh, Carlos's perspective. Is he still able to see my key? Yeah, he is. Oh. Okay, I think spies only alerted him to where my king is, because this isn't glowing anymore. So he's not able to see my king anymore. So that's that's interesting. Arena also doesn't know where my king is. Yeah, he finally he finally sees my villager and kills it, the one that was walling off. And I'd actually managed to wall off all this area down here. <clears throat> so I finally managed to wall off that area. And I sent another villager up to kind of finish the job here, because I, I built some of that gate, now I needed to build the rest of this. So I knew, I, in my mind, as long as I was protected on at least one side, maybe I would have some chance of survival. <clears throat> This is the part where I kind of, I kind of guessed that maybe these two were different because he still hasn't sent his men in. And then Carlos, let's see. All right, actually, let's check out Arita because he does something. He does something here. He does it very soon. He does it very swiftly. But I guess he hasn't done it yet. So let's go to Carlos. Let's check out what he's doing. See, again, he's not concerned at all about being attacked. There is no signs of. Uh, there's no army being built to secure his base. Absolutely nothing. Probably the same for Arena too, isn't it? Yeah. Well, Arena is slightly concerned that Carlos might turn on him. Arena is slightly because this this was set as a free for all game, and this was set up so that you could you couldn't team up with each other. So uh, yeah, I think Arena might have been expecting to get this way. Yeah, he finally takes out the, my TC, and here's my uh, here's the castle with my king in it. Believe it or not, as bad as this looks, I actually managed to save all of this. I managed to destroy the Mongols and his little army here, and I actually managed to free myself. I decided to send these guys forward and take out these villagers, denying his castle. And as you can see here, I have just enough stone to build another castle. I decided to build some stables too, because this is the part where I realized, oh yeah, he's got Tarkins. Well, what's the best thing to counter Tarkins? I don't know. How about a unit that costs only food and nothing else? So I figured, hey, let's go ahead and build some Hussars, or whatever they're called at my stage. I think... Yeah, they're just Scout Cavalry. Okay. Yeah, then I decided to send these guys forward. They're going to build that castle. They're going to... Which will continue to deny that castle. Uh, Carlos, I think, is in the process of actually sending forward some villagers. No, he actually, he actually hasn't. It actually takes him a little while to set up another army to attack me with. But yeah, then Arita comes in, and he decides to come back in and mess with me. And this is the part where Arita, I think, finally... Yep! <clears throat> this is what Arita does. He sets up a castle. He sets up an army up here. He has, he builds, like, trebuchet. Like, I get double-teamed here. So hard. It's, it's so ridiculous. This is the most ridiculous game that I may have ever played of Age of Empires 2 myself. Just, just because of the fact that these two players are so... I don't know. I don't know. I want to throw insults at them because I'm mad. Because I'm salty that they uh, that they beat me. Sure. Not fair and square, but they beat me. And this is an unranked game, by this is an unranked game, by the way. So it's not like the winning actually mattered here. These guys just did this to feel good about themselves. I swear. Yeah. So my castle takes out the rest of these guys. They destroyed. They destroyed my mill. What jerks. Now I get my villagers out, I have them repair the castle, which ends up running out all my stone. <clears throat> <clears throat> if I wanted it back, I could have deleted these buildings and gotten my stone back, but I didn't. There we go, it's destroyed. I have these villagers over here sitting around doing nothing when they should have been building those barracks. I don't know why they didn't build them. 
And uh, I'm also trying to build my little army of scout cavalry right now. There we go. <laughs> I scouted the sheep with my last red mameluke. He built his castle. All my villages over here dead. I don't know what it is I'm so distracted with here. I can't remember. I think I was just distracted with trying to get my uh, my main base set back up and then trying to get this one going over here, which uh, I really wasn't focused on enough. And there we go. Okay. There's some of my villagers right there. So now I'm sending them up this way because I'm thinking, you know what? He's probably beating me. I'm going to set up some barracks over here. Why didn't I just build those? I don't remember. Oh, that's probably why. Okay, now, for some reason, my scouts decided to be idiots and go forward and actually try to attack these Tarkins when they, these guys have better setups than, set up than me. They have more armor, they have more health. And they do more... Actually, we do the same damage, don't we? No, they do more damage. I decide to send my king running because I'm like, you know what, this is the best chance I have for survival. And again, neither of them can see where my king is. None of them can see what I'm doing here with my king. So let's go to Arita's perspective. Again, he has no idea what I'm doing. So I'm not sure how it is Arita sees this, but I send my king down here. At first I'm thinking, you know what? Let's keep him in the watchtower for as long as I can. Then I go, no, he's going to kill me. He's going to destroy everything. So what I end up doing is I send a villager or two over here. And, uh, let's see here. Now again... They have no idea about my about my king being there. Wow, Arita actually knows about my cap about my tower there. I guess that makes sense, huh? Yep, there's this castle. Finally goes up. Arita has a, actually been a really slow player this game. He's not really as aggressive as Carlos is. Like Carlos, I should I'm actually kind of proud of in a way because he's uh, he's plenty enough with his aggression. He does a good job at at staying aggress at being aggressive and staying aggressive. Um, and then again, my mistake was not making sure to wall things in properly. It just, I just gave him an opening. Now this is, this I think was kind of silly. He just builds petards and they don't do anything useful. It was a waste of, of his resources. See, he thinks my building's burning, but he comes back and my villagers are all repairing it. I believe. No, they're, oh no they're not. Also, so he thinks my men, so he thinks my king is in the castle. I put a bunch of villagers in there. Once again, neither of them have any clue about my king being in his castle. Why is there an X right there? What is that? Okay, that was weird. I don't know why there was an X showing up right there where my king was. But yeah, see, I uh, I moved the king out, and I had the villagers. Repair, delete, and repair that wall. There, that that house. So now my king has run up here. He's hiding in this TC, and nobody has any idea. See, so Carlos doesn't know. Arita, again, doesn't know. Why does Arita? What? Why does he have a? Anyways, yeah, none of these guys have any clue. But in a few moments, they're both just going to be like, Oh yeah, his king is right here, and they're going to drop a little uh, signal thing. Ah, there it is. So, it's Carlos. Carlos learned of my king's location. Yep, see, so he learned. He learned that I moved my king over here. So, and he signals over to Arita that my king is hiding there. And uh, the mistake he makes is uh, making sure that only Arita can see this and not me. So, I see that too. And then I go, oh no! Arita, Arita is going to come in with some, with some cavalry and finish off my king, because now they're teaming. So I, I try to quick wall, because I have no idea of where he's going to come from. He comes from down here. See, there's... there's. Oh, it's Carl... Wait, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Let's back up for a bit. Let's back up a bit. Uh, I can't... Um... How far back is a chapter? Um, excuse me. Hold on. Hold on a second. Yeah, see nothing. Look at that. No, there's absolutely no sign whatsoever uh, that these two have signaled to each other where their where their kings are. They these two teamed up. They were teamed up from the very beginning, and I think that that was substantial evidence that Carlos, Santillo, or whatever, and Arita are are garbage players. Yeah, they're already... 
Oh yeah, see? Yep, they signaled before I did, so that's how I know that they already did it. They've already done their signal. Yep, there we go. Arita, er, Carlos now knows. He signals to Arita. Then I panic and try to quick wall, but it's too late. Yep, there it comes. Solo Soyo. What? You just signaled your buddy where my king was. So now we're, now we're caught up to speed. Yeah, there goes my king. I swear, if I tried a bit harder, I could have uh, I could have delayed this for a bit longer. Maybe move my king up this way or something. But no, my king's dead. Hey, you lads and ladies, it's uh, me again, Jossum One. So uh, I just finished editing the video, and I've decided that I'm gonna go ahead and end this video here uh, because nothing else really interesting happens beyond this point. The, uh, the other two players, they don't even actually fight each other. They, they kind of get started like they're gonna, but then they... I, I don't know what it is that they do, but somehow one of them finds a way to make the game lag so bad that uh, they both just end up disconnecting. And so I guess nobody really wins that one. So yeah, nothing nothing interesting really happens beyond this point. But this was still a, a pretty fun game for me to, to cast, and I hope you guys enjoyed it too. With all that said, I hope to see you guys again next time. Take care.